All right, so in the last example, we took a look at how to actually implement serving. So adding on to the sort of set of states that our game has. In this example, we'll take a look at another state, a victory state, which will allow it to show that a player wins when they reach reached a certain amount of points. Now, typically it's 10 points with Pong. Um, for the sake of illustration, what we'll probably end up doing is making it two or three points just for the, if we want to actually test it and make sure it works, it would kind of save a little bit of time just to do that instead of having it be 10 points. So why don't we go over to the code? This isn't going to be a terribly difficult difficult thing to add. What we will need, like I said again, is a victory state. Um, and a victory state is just going to be whenever player 1 score or player 10 score is equal to 10. So what we're going to go ahead and do first is I have a display score function here that I've also separated out in the distro in case you want to take a look at that. Um, but let's go ahead and add another if condition here to the uh, the draw sort of side, the love.draw function that we've implemented. So else if game state is equal to victory, then we're going to draw a victory message. Now, first of all, what we need to do is set the victory stage somewhere in our code for this to actually trigger. So I'm going to go up to the update function where people get points. Uh, let's see, that is over here. So if ball x is less than zero or it's greater than virtual width, then we end up having it be the case that someone scores. So in this case, we'll add a situation here. So we'll say, if player two score is greater than or equal to 10, it'll only, I mean, it'll only ever be 10, it won't be greater than 10, but we'll set the game state to be victory. Else, we'll take this line here and just plug it in right there. So if it's 10, then they'll get set to the victory state. If not, they'll get set to the serve state. And I want to do the exact same thing over here. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this, and but set that to the player 1 score, not the player 2 score. So that's good. So the game state should be set to victory. Additionally, we're probably going to want to say who the winning player was. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm actually going to come up here to the top. Underneath serving player, I'm going to say winning player. And I'm going to set it to zero for right now because no one has actually won. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come back down to where I just added the victory state code. And I'm going to say winning player is equal to two in the case that player two score is greater than or equal to 10. And in the case that player one score is greater than or equal to 10, I'm going to set that to winning player is equal to one. So let's go down back to the bottom where we have the print messages right here. And what I want to do is, like I showed in the slide, there's going to be a little bit of a larger header and then a smaller header that says, first off, that player X won, and then the smaller header that says, press enter to restart. So what I'm going to do is say love.graphics.setFont. And let's say that we're going to have a font called Victory Font. And we haven't created it yet, but we will very shortly. I'm going to say love.graphics.printf. And let's just take this code here, copy it, Printed actually right here, player plus plus like dot dot the string of the not serving player but the winning player, and then I'm going to say space wins, and then we're going to go ahead and just say that's going to be at ten, and then it's going to be virtual width in the center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we'll take the next message for press enter to serve, and let's assume that our font is going to be 24 pixels. So what we need to do is instead of setting it 10 pixels below the other one, we need to set it at least 24 pixels, actually 24 um, plus 8. So let's just say 32 pixels below 10. So let's just say that that's going to be um, at 42, just like that. And we'll test that out just to make sure it works. We might have to finagle it a little bit to make sure it actually works well. And that's it for the victory message that we have. So again, the next thing we need to do is actually set such that when the user presses enter during the victory state, it reset, resets the game. Because currently it's going to sort of be like almost like a serve state or a start state in and of itself, but just showing the victory message. So we'll say um, in the event that enter or return is pressed, if the game state is start, then we need to set it to serve. Else if game state is equal to victory, then we'll set the game state equal to Sir, or to start, actually. We'll start the uh, game from the very beginning, so it'll show who the serving player actually is. And then that should be most of the code. So let's go ahead and actually one more thing, too. Instead of setting the uh, score to check for 10 and 2, I'm a little bit, I scrolled a little bit above where I wanted to go. Let's just set it to 3 for now, just for testing purposes. So set it to 3, do that, and let's go ahead and run this.
So we have everything looking normal. We have the FPS marker. Let's go ahead. Player one serves. So it's going to go to the right. Player two serves. And then eventually we're going to have player, looks like player one is going to win. Oh, and we have, oh, right, we forgot to create the victory font. Okay, that is my bad. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Where we have the other fonts, I'm going to set, create a victory font is equal to love dot graphics dot set font or sorry new font and it's gonna be font dot ttf at size 24 save that and we are setting the actually no we're not setting the font I don't think back to the normal one afterwards so we set it to victory font we do the player something wins then we need to set love dot graphics dot set font to the small font for the message after that let's run that again and we'll painstakingly do this one more time. I apologize, but thankfully we set it to three and not 10. So this shouldn't be too bad. And boom, player one wins. And then we see we have the three and the two there. We can still move. If I press enter, it gets back to the start state. And if I press enter one more time, oh, what I'm realizing actually, we forgot to set the scores back to zero, zero. Very important piece. So why don't we do that as well? So let's go over to the victory state over where it says... Uh, oh, it's in the love.keypressed uh, key handler here. So if we're in the victory and we press start, player one score is going to be equal to zero. Player two score is going to be equal to zero. Let's try it one more time. Fingers crossed this should be everything. Okay. One, zero, one, one, two, one, two, two. And finally, three, two, press enter. And the scores get reset back to zero, zero. So that's it. For the victory update, everything is more or less there in terms of game functionality. We have two very simple updates coming up. Actually, the next update is probably my favorite. It's the audio update where we're actually going to have sound effects working with the ball hitting the paddle and with getting a score upgraded. And the very last one is going to be a very minor thing on how to resize the canvas. But the core functionality for Pong is here. It's very exciting. I'll see you on the next video for Pong 11, the audio update.